Crystal Palace may come to look to at this as the moment conviction was sapped from their bid for Premier League survival. The game was deep into stoppage time at the end when Charlie Daniels tripped Wilfried Zaha in the box with the referee awarding his second spot kick of the game. Christian Benteke, a player without a goal since May, insisted on taking the resultant penalty to the disgust of his captain, Scott Dan, and other teammates. There was a certain inevitability when the Belgian's attempt was duly pushed away by Asmir Begevic. Benteke would depart to booze, with Roy Hodgson going over to speak with an infuriated supporter in the main stand as he trudged ruefully down the touchline. This was so wasteful, not least because Luka Milivojevic, the team's allocated penalty taker, was still on the pitch and had thumped home his side's equaliser before the break. The Serb has never missed one since arriving last January. Benteke, in contrast, has now scored only two of five for the club. His overall game deserved better but, instead, Palace were left cursing his decision and another two points dropped. They remain entrenched in trouble. Hodgson's side had raised their standards in recent weeks but the helter-skelter nature of this contest still perhaps betrayed the chaos of the relegation scrap they are in. The four goals were exchanged before the interval, the frenzy taking the breath away. The home side, initially dominant until panicked in arrears, had rallied just before half-time to turn deficit into advantage in four frantic minutes. First Milivojevic slammed home his penalty after Bigovic's trip on Wilfried Zaha, the forward dragged his leg and was clipped by the on-rushing goalkeeper, before the substitute Scott Dan prodded into an empty net from Johan Cabe's fine centre. Both goals owed much to Benteke's contribution, though Zaha's pace and invention had terrified the Cherries' backline almost from the outset. Yet even with that turnaround still being digested in the stands, and just as against Everton last month, Palace could not cling to the lead through stoppage time at the end of the half. A hopeful punt forward by Lewis Cook liberated Defoe beyond Dan, though there still seemed little danger with the angle unkind on the right of the box. Yet the strikers finished bollied up and over Julian Spironi, almost defied belief. The attempt, so perfectly executed, was a thing of beauty. It was also his ninth goal in ten league appearances against these opponents and, for the third game in succession against Palace, completed a brace. His first reward had been pilfered shrewdly from the midst of Palace's early pressure. A corner, conceded and undisputed by Mamadou Sarko, showcased a training ground routine which utterly bamboozled the hosts. Andrew Sermon rolled the ball into junior Stan Eilers, darting forward almost unnoticed from the near post, with the midfielder able to collect again and square a pass to the penalty spot. There loitered Defoe, unmarked with Josh King having slyly pulled back the striker's marker, Jeffrey Schlapp, to side foot accurately into the corner. It is hard to see how Palace will extricate themselves from their predicament near the foot while they are this obliging at the back in home fixtures. Defoe, in truth, should have completed a hat-trick before the hour mark, though the wonderfully gung-ho nature of so much of the play rarely abated. Spironi denied Defoe and Jordan Ibe, while Zaha tormented the Bournemouth backline and Dan, free in front of goal at another Benteke knockdown, skied a half-volley wastefully over the bar. That felt key. At the time, though the critical miss was still to come. It is hard to see how Benteke recovers from this.